Hey everybody, I'm stoked to have reached 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Huge props for everybody that subscribed, thank you for your support. In this video, I'm going to talk about fielding the pool, I'm going to talk about where you should look when you have the disc in your hand in order to sustain flow. I'm going to talk about maintaining shape when the disc is in the air, so that you have maximum options when someone catches it. Uh, I'm also going to touch on the pros and cons of set plays versus organic offense. Also in this video, I talk about something that happens quite often on the ultimate field that I think is really strange. This video is made up of clips of a live online video analysis session I did with the Blue Devils, who are the Victoria State Under-22 team in Australia. They're preparing for the Under-22 Nationals, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, and they've been training and playing hex. Okay, fielding the pool. Number one, keep the disc moving. You catch the disc here and you look and if you're not going to throw to that, then you don't need to fake it because fake it, you know that this person's free. But if you know that this person's free, you don't need to look down there. Okay. If you did, if you did actually throw this disc, all right, then he'd have the disc and he'd be surrounded, all right, which is going to happen from time to time, but it's not ideal. He's going to be surrounded. Um, also, he's only going to have like a couple of players in front, right? Whereas if you work the disc up from the back, then when the defense set, you're not surrounded, you should be in good shape, and you've got not just um, like players in front of you to throw to, but they've also got players in front of them. Okay, so you've got like two levels of continuation. Okay, so when you're fielding the pool, um, try not to go for the yards. Yeah, don't don't look to eat up the yards at the beginning. Because you'll then put yourself in a in a in a bad situation to to start flowing. All right. Instead, just start working with the person at the back, um, and then the flow will then kind of follow from that. When and when the defense arrive, you'll be in a really good position. This is a classic coach. The guy comes in. He's like, "Oh, I can stop this. Force the throw to go backwards." But we're playing hex, so it doesn't matter if the throw goes backwards. Okay, so stall has reached three. Um, you want to be keeping the disc moving whenever you can, taking all the open passes you can. So this is great, nice quick pass here. Now it catches. Immediately he looks downfield, okay. But this guy is actually free. His, his defender runs away from him, so he's totally free here. So very early on in the stall, look at the person at three to you. Okay, quite often they're, they're free. So you could have kept the stall under three by hitting him Instead, it goes above three, and that, that makes it a slightly harder situation. Let's have a look at this movement. The reason why it gets above three isn't, isn't just because it doesn't look over here. It looks into the middle because there's this movement happening, yeah, and movement draws your eye. Um, but this cut here is never free, yeah? So after, after doing a few steps, if the defender is that, is that close, you shouldn't be running through that cut. That cut should have been pulled out of earlier because it takes attention to the thrower. I think if the thrower throws this, the defender has got a good bid, basically. And we don't we don't need to we don't need to take those risks. So as soon as this cut starts, it's like okay, she's on me, just like instinctively go away from her, try and shake her off before you run through that cut. Defense, defense, defense. Yeah, so um stall here gets quite high, alright. Um in a high stall, you need to tighten up to your person. So one, two, three, four, five. This is where it starts to get like a bit crazy for them. This is where they start to look dump. Traditional offenses, they, you know, you look downfield for five, six seconds, then you look and engage your reset or your dump, right? Um, if you love hex, then you probably understand why this is a, a bad way of playing offense. Um, but the way that you can punish it on defense is to know that they're going to look downfield for those five, so clog up downfield, and then it's before they turn to their dump, you mark up the dump. So unfortunately, it does kind of the opposite here. You get into the lane on the five and six, and that's when they're kind of programmed to then look at the dump. If you were marking tight against the dump at that point, then they would have had to beat you in a one-on-one, -on -one, which... It's still favourable to the offence, but uh, it gives the defence a, a good chance at a turnover. Uh, that would have been like a good flash poach, you know, just jump across into their vision and then and then jump back to mark mark your original person. That way, everywhere they look, you'll be there. This is a bit of stack mentality in terms of the store count. So if you catch this one, two, three, four, five, of just looking downfield, right? 
six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> okay, and now looking this way, this is the first time we've even seen like the him, him look over this way at all. Okay, so when you're when you're in this position on the field, your field of view should be like so you should be able to see all of these players in this in this area the whole time. Um, but most of the time he's looking this way. Okay, if he was facing a field, he'd he would see that this person was the most free. Okay, it's not about gaining yards; it's all about keeping the disc moving. I think this player should look for the disc back, and he should move this way. Look for the disc back over here. But it's like a clearing out move almost. And then he looks around a bit, but he's he's repositioning somewhere. He's free. He's free. But now, now we're looking down over here. Now we're focusing down here. Sometimes when you see your teammates do it, and sometimes when you see the opposition do it, then you kind of naturally do it, all right? But you you got to play your own game. I've seen it many, many times where a, a team will train Hex, and they'll be really smooth at their training. So as soon as they get to a tournament, they're surrounded by people playing kind of stop-start, vertical stack style, and, and they fall into that again. It's a very powerful thing, um, conforming to, to what everyone around you is doing. Um, but yeah, trying to break out of that. Focus on keeping the disc moving rather than gaining yards. I've got five seconds where I can look into the end zone and maybe, maybe I can throw a score, and then I'll then I'll have five seconds to then take an open pass. Now it should be like right, I've got loads of time, but the quicker that I can find an open pass, the better. Yeah, I've got what three seconds to basically keep the flow. All right, so if you can find an open pass in three seconds, that's quite good. Frank Huguenard thinks that it should be under one second. If you don't get the disc out of your hands in under one second on average, then, then you're not um, being a, a benefit to the team, which is quite a harsh view. But um, I think it'd be quite interesting if everyone aimed to get the disc out of their hand in one second. Maybe in your trainings, you can implement a three second stall count and see what happens. Especially if you focus on shape, like maintaining shape whilst the disc is in the air. So, okay, the disc is going to be caught over there. For that position, where should the shape be? All right, if all your players can calculate that quickly, then when they catch it, they'll have plenty of options around them, and you should be able to get the disc off before the stool reaches three. And the process kind of starts again. But it, the, the process then becomes like a fluid thing. All right, what's the priority between continuing the path of the disc and throwing back to the previous thrower? Uh, that's a great question, Alexander. The order of where you look is number one, what's in front of you. And I don't mean like downfield, I mean literally where your chest is facing. If anyone's free here, then, then you take that pass, okay? After that, whether you look back to the previous thrower or whether you look to continue the line of the disc, they're both good places to look. Um, if you look back to the thrower, that lends itself more to dribbling type movement. And if you look to continue the path of the disc, that lends itself more to changing the angle of attack, right? Because the disc moves further, it could be, you know, whether, whether, whether you're gaining, gaining yards as well. Oh, hey, Rue. Um, and you could also have some teammates, as you clearly do, who are timed their cuts to be free, um, continuing the line of the disc. Okay, so, so both of them are good. The priority is what's directly in front of you. And then you can choose, depending on what's going on, um, previous thrower or continuing the line of the disc. Auto faking. Super weird. A lot of energy there, uh, and all it does is stop this person from biting hard over here, which I don't think they were going to do anyway. It's one that one of the strangest things I find about Ultimate is when people catch the disc near the end zone, and none of their teammates are in the end zone, and they'll stand looking at the end zone and might fake a couple of times. It's like, what? Like your teammates are over there. <laughs> like, <laughs> who are you trying to kid? For me, it's just a bizarre sequence of events that happens quite frequently. Okay, we're bricking it. We're bricking it. We're bricking it. Right now, this shape. This shape is messed up, guys. So it's kind of you're doing like a two-three-two here. When the disc is on the brick mark, then it's it's this is the kind of shape you want, all right. And what you've done is you've tried to keep it as like a a two-three-two, two, but with the disc on the brick mark. What you're going to do with these players now, where it's all off the side, you're going to like you're going to like shrink. You can maybe shrink so that the disc is kind of on the kind of on the brick mark. But you see like it's not balanced anymore, okay? So it's kind of like, that's how you could keep shape and have the disc on the brick mark and be in a 2-3-2. Two, two. 
but obviously that's you know weird <laughs> that's not going to work out well so i think what you've done you've got your three in a line and you've got the player here in a dump okay and this is back to stack mentality of like having one reset having one dump um but all players are equal you've got your player here you've got your like dump player like here okay and then the other three are making their, their three like across here and then you and then i imagine you've got the two over here all right but you can see that that's kind of messed up when you have the shape messed up then it, it like the shape is the supporting structure for all of the movement and everything so if the shape is skewed at the beginning that's going to cause you lots of problems with the movement lots of problems with the rhythm and the flow and everything like that the benefit of good shape isn't initiating movement it's um, having the continuation and keeping the movement, you know, after that first pass, you have all the supporting players in the right position. Having a set of play means that you're, you're kind of, you have a plan which the defense can then scupper. If you if you play um, organic, then the defense don't know what you're going to do. They can't know what you're going to do, and that can be an advantage. It's good to learn to play organic, natural. Um, because it develops your kind of dynamic understanding of space and it, it helps you kind of work better together as a team as well um, and then set plays and, and end zone plays are, are kind of just making these more efficient when you've already got those things down that throw is really fast with six i recommend you practice touch throws it makes it much easier to catch you see a lot of turnovers will be because the disc has been thrown too fast but, like there's already been several in this game. Once your offense is nice, you don't need to throw hard. You don't need to throw fast. And it, if you can throw slow, and if you can um, put the disc to space, then it it kind of opens up a new dimension on the field because you can you can then start using time as well as space. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more, then make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. And if you'd like a live online video analysis session with your team, then get in touch with me or check out the services page on felixultimate.com for more info. See you again soon.